It is my humble opinion, and there's nothing humble about me. Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. I do think that, I, I think what's going on definitely will come to a bad ending. I mean, you've got virtually everybody. I, I have a class, I have 11 schools coming on Friday. The questions will be on Bitcoin. Suppose you could make a lot of money trading freshly harvested baby brains. Would you do it or would you say that's immoral? You weird, buddy. You wouldn't trade them, would you? Too, it's too, too, too awful a concept. Well, to me, Bitcoin is almost as bad. But I don't like the cryptocurrencies only because, maybe because I don't understand them, but, but you, you know, when you talk about the blockchain and you talk about them, but I, I, I don't understand. Number two, El Salvador, let's face it, it's on its back. It's got real problems. It's almost, it's a bankrupt company, country, in fact. Fruity and slip. A mistake in speech or action in which a person supposedly shows his or her true subconscious desires. Freshly harvested baby brands. You're weird! Self-destruct sequence activated. Three, two, one. Is this your homework, Larry? Just ask him about the car, man. Is this yours, Larry? Is this your homework, Larry? Is that your car out front? Is this your homework, Larry? We, we know it's his fucking homework. Where's the fucking money, you little brat? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Johnny here. I hope you're all having a wonderful week so far. Let's get right into today's episode. Bitcoin is looking strong right now, and with a golden cross looming, the bulls appear to be in full control as the price once again approaches that $50,000 price level. The total crypto market cap is once again back over $2 trillion and is climbing. Also, altcoins have been on an absolute tear over these last few weeks. And as we said in the last video, there is no shortage of euphoria anywhere in these markets. And with yesterday's better than expected CPI data, there's a decent possibility that the Fed may keep this party going a little bit longer. Hedge funds across the board are increasing their exposure to cryptocurrencies. And just today, Wells Fargo released their investment strategy report indicating that they're seeing heavy interest in crypto from their clients. However, in this report, they noticeably failed to explicitly state that they're going to begin allocating funds to invest in said cryptocurrencies. Now, hiding behind all of this euphoria, though, there are some major warning signs that we really need to pay attention to. First, the SEC versus Coinbase saga. Received a Wells notice from the SEC threatening a lawsuit over its planned product that would allow users to earn interest by lending crypto assets. As a result, Coinbase says it will delay the launch of its Lend product until at least October. Interesting thread uh, from Brian Armstrong. Some really sketchy behavior coming out of the SEC recently. And then he goes into what he calls story time. Now, ever since their IPO back in April, Coinbase shares have dropped considerably since opening above $420. And even though the price of the stock has fallen since the news of this potential SEC lawsuit, this chart still does look pretty strong and is showing some nice bullish structure, especially if the bulls can step in here and keep the prices above $227. Now, last week, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong tweeted about his run-in with the SEC and Chairman Gary Gensler. Armstrong said that he broached the topic of a new lending facility with the regulators only to be met with accusations that the program violates securities laws, saying that the SEC refused to explain how they had come to that conclusion, even threatening legal action if Coinbase proceeds with the offering to its users. Now, however the scenario unfolds, it may have lasting consequences for the entire crypto industry, but there's not a doubt in my mind that we'll get through it, just like every other legal threat over the years from government overseers. Second, the fight against state-focused Bitcoin adoption. Now, it's no secret that old money hates Bitcoin. 
What they hate even more is the threat of Bitcoin adoption and what it brings to their legacy of corruption and centralized control over global finance. The aggression towards any attempt by a country to escape the USD stranglehold on their economy couldn't be any more obvious with what we're seeing in El Salvador right now with protests, a blatant Bitcoin price manipulation. On June 9th of this year, El Salvador announced their plans to make Bitcoin legal tender in the country, likely contributing to the bullish price action we saw leading up to the recent push towards $53,000. Then on the day Bitcoin became legal tender in the country, the price happened to drop almost 20% in some pretty obvious price manipulation in a classic buy the hype sell the news scenario third hedge fund exposure is increasing now in a video a couple of months ago we went over the increasing exposure of hedge funds in traditional markets and how this robust increase in open interest has historically been a pretty reliable contrarian indicator a move by private equity that typically precedes major market sell-offs Fourth, stock market warnings and Bitcoin's correlation to the S&P 500. Now we've discussed this chart in every video over the last year. The DJI is nearing a major decision point and the technicals pointing towards a more than 50% correction. Now the S&P 500 is looking pretty weak at the time of recording this video breaking below the 55 and 21 daily exponential moving averages and looking like the bears could push this index quite a bit lower. Now it's well known that Bitcoin and the S&P 500 have historically been pretty tightly correlated and right now we're seeing a major bearish warning signal that we haven't seen in about 14 years. Now, even though Bitcoin wasn't around 14 years ago and we don't have any data to reference how Bitcoin might react to this information, it's pretty well established that Bitcoin and the S&P 500 are tightly correlated. So we must take this index seriously when determining our risk exposure in our current crypto holdings and our outlook on the prices in the near future. Now, let's take a look at this chart from Sentiment Trader that shows the spread between the bear market probability and the blue line and the max macro index models. Now data used in this bearish prediction model include the US unemployment rate, ISM manufacturing index, the yield curve, the inflation rate, and the price to earnings ratio. Now the higher the spread here, the higher the probability of a bear market combined with poor macro conditions. Now the chart shows that the S&P 500 annualized return is minus 17.6% when the spread is above 20% just like it is now. Now this table shows forward returns in the S&P 500 after the spread crosses above 20% for the first time in at least a year and shows that returns are historically really freaking bad across higher timeframes up to about two years out. Now the last time we saw this same market warning sign was all the way back in 2007, just before the 2008 financial crisis, that arguably is the reason our economy is in the fragile state it's in right now. Now the DXY is gaining some pretty bullish momentum and the 10 year rate is looking like it wants to break down out of this pennant adding further confluence to a strengthening dollar. Now while a stronger dollar has historically meant a falling Bitcoin price, a decoupling event where Bitcoin separates itself from the dollar and traditional markets is honestly not out of the question, especially when you consider its similarities to gold as an inflation and economic disaster hedge and just how strong this monthly gold spot price chart looks right now. And fifth, the anticipation that the Federal Reserve is going to announce they are going to begin tapering. Now, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet grew with another $8 billion this week alone, now totaling over $8.3 trillion, a new all-time high. Now, it seems that the Federal Reserve is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, and any day now, they could announce that they're going to start scaling back their asset purchasing programs, and this will certainly have huge implications for all markets, likely resulting in a sell-off that could be comparable to what we saw in early 2020 or even worse. Now, we can certainly see that investors are hedging their risk and moving into physical gold, where historically the rotation out of riskier investments typically meant getting into bonds. 
Now, considering the many advantages Bitcoin has compared to gold, it would be logical to assume that the answer here is yes. Investors are moving into Bitcoin as a hedge against the instability of the dollar and uncertain future of the United States economy. So what does all of this mean? Well, taking all of this in consideration, does this mean that Bitcoin is going to crash down to $9.6,000 anytime soon? Well, if you would have asked me a couple of weeks ago, I might have said yes. But at this point in time, I have to definitively say not just yet. So, so far, even though the bear scenario is not yet invalidated, Bitcoin has met all of our bullish confirmations that we set out in the last videos ever since Bitcoin hit that $29,000 higher low back in late July. Now, the bulls pushed above the 21 weekly exponential moving average and have so far held above this moving average as support. Now, we're seeing on chain data suggest that a supply shock is potentially coming as the all exchange reserves continues to dwindle. And where this has typically been an indicator of coming higher prices, it can't be ruled out that these reserves have been taken off of exchanges for OTC transactions which really adds a lot of ambiguity to this metric. So the bullish scenario here will obviously depend on a number of things, but here's what we're looking for in the chart. Bitcoin and the total crypto market had a shakeout this week as the fake news surrounding Litecoin caused a bit of a spike in volatility. However, the structure of the market did not change. In fact, Bitcoin's price might be bottoming out right now as a golden cross where the 50 daily moving average crosses the 200 daily moving average is starting to form and looks to be on the horizon. Now, funding rate is looking pretty bullish as it's in the negative, and we have hidden bullish divergence across indicators on daily time frames. The first test for the bulls to meet would be to break across the $48.94 thousand dollar resistance. And if the bulls can hold support above this price, then the next test will be $55,000 where a break of this resistance level is likely going to lead to Bitcoin heading into new all time highs with $71.59 thousand dollars directly in sight. And it could approach $100,000 in as little as four to six weeks. Now, adding further confluence to the bullish case here is a strong structure of the total crypto market cap holding well above the $2 trillion mark and continuing to climb. We've also seen a huge surge in the USDT market cap over the last few months, and this has historically preceded massive Bitcoin uptrends. However, if we do see a rejection where the price is at right now, we'll need to see the bulls hold support at the 21 weekly exponential moving average, which is currently sitting right at $43,000. Even though the chart does look pretty bullish right now, there are some bearish warning signs we definitely need to pay attention to. There's some bearish divergences here on the 4-hour MACD and stochastic RSI hitting towards some near-term bearish price action. Now, should the bears push the price down below the 21 weekly exponential moving average, then the potential for a much longer and brutal bear market in Bitcoin becomes more likely with the next support level the bulls must hold all the way down at $39.37 thousand dollars where the price of bitcoin is going in the near term is pretty hard to tell as there is a lot of uncertainty in these markets right now so if you're holding bitcoin it's really important for you to see beyond what's currently in front of us so even if we do see a major market correction in bitcoin and the broader crypto market make no mistake the decentralized nature of bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will change finance as we know it however the path towards getting there is not going to be smooth and we may run into a few road bumps along the way Wood making some big headlines on Bitcoin and some other bullish price targets. I sat down with the ARK Invest founder at the SALT conference in New York last night. Here's what she told me about Bitcoin. We believe that the, the price uh, will be tenfold of where it is today. So instead of 45,000, over 500,000. Confidence in Ether has gone up dramatically as we've seen the beginning of this trans uh, transition from proof right. of work to proof of stake. We'd still probably do 60% uh, Bitcoin, 40% Ether. We're going to have a lot more from Kathy Wood a bit later this hour, but uh, there it is, 10 times. So what are we at? 45,000 right now? 10 times? I've seen people say a million, right? So that would be 20. There's your number. I mean, I've seen a million. Possibly. Oh, no, there's a lot. There's people who believe a million. But her base case, I should say, by the way, this is what her five-year five, five, yeah. five outlook. Five years from now.
five years from now. And, and her, her point with that, the basis is that because you're going to have so many companies that are using it right. and, and kind of adapt. Her, her it. premise is that there's going to be a lot of companies that are going to put it on their balance sheet. There's going to be other people who are going to use it. Uh, there are going to be countries that are going to use it. And that that's what's going to uh, effectively generate the demand that would get the price right. at a 10 times more. Over 21 million. That's it. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for dropping in and sticking with me until the end. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to join that free Telegram group. The link is in the description below. If you're interested in learning technical analysis or you just want to join the members-only Telegram group, go ahead and head on over to our website, 3 candlecollectivecom and submit your information today. We are giving away some special free access passes to our technical analysis. Analysis basic training course. Again, it's six chapters. It's 44 videos. You can get through all of this at your own pace. Each chapter has its own chapter PDF, and there are a ton of useful resources in here, especially for the new trader. Again, that's 3candlecollective.com. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.